Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to share with you our thoughts on budget 2024. More specifically, what stocks are going to be affected positively and negatively. A little bit of uh, background. Here's how our country's finances look like. Yes. Our budget, right? Uh, what's coming in? What are the sources? So we have income tax, we have um, you know, corporate tax, we have indirect and direct taxes, other direct taxes. Uh, we have, of course, borrowing. We are in a deficit. So in other words, we have to borrow money. Yes. And then, of course, we have to spend that money. Uh, biggest chunk of it, about a quarter, goes to emoluments. Emoluments is just another word for the salary for the people in the government. Uh, we have retirement charges. This would be your pension funds. You know, all those people who work in the government for a long time. They need to be paid so that there's this yeah there's that that services and a lot of other part stuff you know i'm go not going to go through you guys can pause and see uh what it looks like yes correct and just to add on a little bit this is a comparison between 2023 and 2024 so if you compare both charts right this one is your revenue and this one is more on the expenses side uh if you look at the revenue in 2023 and 2024 you notice that the borrowing and use of government asset, asset they actually reduced quite a bit so this one last time, it contributes about 26.8%. That's what they're going to expect it, right, in 2023. But in 2024, they're going to reduce that amount to about 21.9%. And where is the remaining, uh, the difference of like 5 point, sorry, 4.9%, where is it going to make up? It's actually from the income tax segment. Mm -hmm. So that's why you notice that there's a lot of tax uh, that the government uh, just newly uh, imposed. Like for example, your luxury tax, your SSD also is going up yep. and a lot of different new tax. So that's why they kind of like expecting this income tax break uh, to segment go to go uh, up. Go up, sorry. Time. Yeah, yeah. So that that's why you hear a lot of people say that we are going to, uh, the right year is going to suffer a little bit more. Uh. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very interesting chart. Uh, from the MOF. This is just our deficit. Right? Yes, correct. And, uh, this is our deficit. How many billions we are losing a year as a country. Yes. I believe this goes all the way back about 10 years. Mm. And we are expecting, if I'm not mistaken, around a four point something percent uh, deficit. Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah. So and they are trying to and they're trying to minimize it into even more lesser, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's right. Uh yeah. which is a good sign. Uh, you can see uh, the Malaysian government is trying to be a little bit more responsible. Yes. So uh, then we go into the revenue breakdown. We know that, for example, Malaysia, we are not oil dependent per se, but certainly oil is a relevant factor. Yes. 19 to 20% of our exports are oil related. And when you take into account things like the dividends Petronas pay us, the income tax that we charge Petronas, and also all the taxes that are gained from people who earn salary from Petronas, you are looking at nearly a third of our uh, government's revenue. It's coming, coming from Petronas. That, give or take, almost yeah. about 100 billion ringgit. Yeah, which is quite- So cool. they are expecting actually lower Petronas uh, dividends, which uh, makes sense because, um, you know, the so-called, the demand, the future demand for oil, a lot of people are seeing is going to be a bit more muted, meaning mm. to say, it's not going to be as what it was before. Yeah. Um, I have a slightly different view, but it doesn't really matter. I think being conservative is always good. And uh, non-oil and gas revenues actually are due to increase by 5.3% year on year, which is fantastic, right? We are weaning off oil and gas influence. Uh, this would be, yeah, Jonathan, you want to share with us this? Oh, well? uh, this one is more on the tax collection uh, in terms of uh, GDP, percentage mm -hmm. of GDP. So in the past, you can see like last time we didn't really collect a lot of tax from the people. That's why a lot of people, uh, they kind of like celebrated la, like, I uh, you know you to pay so much tax, but right now it's kind of like trickling up a little bit by little that's bit. Right. And in 2024, there's even more tax to pay. That's why the riots start to like make noise. Some of the opposition also start to make noise about it already. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's always the case. We are trying to like, I mean, the government is also, it's a very tough job to find balance yeah, between saving and increasing money mm -hmm. yeah so you have to like balance and find which one you want to impose and in this case they are going to introduce more tax uh this is just the federal government uh, opex breakdown uh, you can see that in terms of the percentage of gdp is actually dropping a lot they are cutting down a little bit on their opex That's a little good. bit yeah which is quite uh, not not too bad not too bad 
uh, for them to actually kind of save costs. Okay, so uh, this is what has been introduced in the public. I think when the budget 24, 24 release, the first few lines you see is SSD 8%. Yeah. Uh, but good thing is that it's not included in food and beverage and tel- telecom. I mean, if it's included there, why well, it'll be even more expensive. But even so, right, it will kind of indirectly affect the food and beverage because if let's say your hawker store, right, when they want to buy your raw materials and everything yeah, to cook, right? It. Yeah, anyhow, they still have to increase price. So it's a it's a goods and I mean, it's it's related, lah, right? Yeah, correct. It's just, I mean, GST is probably a third more efficient than SSD. SSD. Yeah. So what that really means is, let's say, if SSD is at, let's call it uh, 4%, let's mm. say, uh, it only requires GST to be about 3% to be as efficient in collecting the taxes. Right. So uh, I think there's some truth when people say that uh, the government wants to introduce uh, GST right, because they know of the efficiency of collecting taxes through that method. But they recognize the politics behind that. Hmm. If you introduce GST, it's like, oh, you know, different than Najib, right? Didn't yeah. you bring down Najib? Correct. Right? Not even a year into your prime ministership, you are now going to be like Najib, the, the person you attack. So what do they do? They increase it. Uh, they, they add 2%, which is roughly a third, right? A third increase from 6% of GST. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a very sad part. And then there's a two new things also they uh, kind of impose, which is the luxury goods, 5 to 10% on yeah. jewelry and watches. But if you are foreign tourists who's visiting or buy bought some high value stuff in Malaysia, right, you won't be getting this kind of tax. This is not going to be that much of a issue yeah, because, because rich of- people will just fly to Switzerland and just buy mm. whatever they want. Yeah. I had a friend who bought a ring uh, for the wife for the wedding. Mm. He wanted to buy a Tiffany ring. He went to Switzerland and buy. Yeah, smart. <laughs> okay. Then the third one, uh, which is really very interesting because uh, I didn't really highlight this for, uh, it's a capital gain tax 10% for unlisted companies. So I actually read uh, one of these, uh, I forgot who was his name, but it's uh, from a Twitter thread. It's actually for companies that dispose of their shares. Yeah. Then they will get this tax. Yep. It's not for individuals who dispose of so their So you're looking at like so props or uh, limited liability. Yes, so it's Sandra Berhard and up. Yeah, correct, correct. So yeah, there's actually a catch. Uh, there's a catch on this word for and off. So if it's for companies, right, it means this is only for the company that is going to get affected. But it's, it's, if it's off unlisted companies, then individuals and companies both also going to affect it. Yeah. yeah. But maybe the government need to clarify a little bit on this. Uh, whether is it really to both parties, individuals or companies, or is it just- At the top of my head, I can see so many ways to circumvent this really, right? Yeah. You, 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 you just deal with the other party and say, uh, no, no, we just swap the shares or give you the shares at a price mm. that does not incur any cap, that shows no capital gains. And then in another way, get paid the amount that they want to be acquired so if they bought, let's say they have the company at a dollar per share and then they want to sell for like a dollar fifty, mm. just sell it to the other guy for a dollar and then the other fifty cents that do some other transaction elsewhere and then don't call it capital gains. Don't call it related to the company, just call it something else. All right. I really can think of a loophole already behind this. Yeah. All of these things. Yeah, okay. And then the last one, which my sister will be kind of sad because they're going to be taxing uh karaoke. My sister loves karaoke. Uh, and also this logistic brokerage and underwriting. Brokerage one is a little bit very tricky. I don't know what this brokerage means. I hope it's not stop brokering. Oh, it will. I'm quite sure it will, it, will, it will be affected mm. also. It okay, will okay. definitely affect. It will, uh, I'm not sure if this is additional tax, but I know SST is already going yeah, to yeah. affect. Yeah, correct, correct. correct. Uh, bro- uh, broking services. Yeah. So our trading and all that. Yeah, this line is just, they just say that might tax on this. Yeah, I, I think what is dangerous about like the capital gains tax is actually not so much that it's on the unlisted because especially with private companies, I think there are a lot of ways to go about it. Yeah. Uh, I think the danger is that this is just a stepping stone to public companies. Yeah. Could I be. think that will be uh, an issue. Uh, but all the best if they ever do it to public companies because of the calculation, right? It's going to be- Yeah, it's going to be hitting. Uh. Uh, SE or BUSA, whoever is going to- 
hire a lot more people. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is just a personal and corporation tax. Yeah, uh, yeah they introduce if you have a hundred million in sales or maybe in income, right, annually, uh, you need to do this e- invoicing. Uh, so yeah, it's mandatory already. And then for us taxpayer based on income category, right, they will roll out this e-invoicing uh, by phases uh, starting from July 2025. E-invoicing, what do you mean by us? We, we don't do it based on an invoice, right? Uh. I'm not sure what's the difference between e-invoicing and the normal in-invoicing. Okay. Yeah, that's actually quite confusing. No, well, I mean, they do e-invoicing because then it's transparent. It's easy yes. to track, right? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, they could install a device on all that on, let's say, point of sale systems. Hmm. So they track straight away every time it goes through. So it's, it's easy, hmm. right? Hmm. Uh, but this taxpayer one is interesting. I'm not, not too no. sure. Anyway, property tax, 4% flat stamp duty on foreign property ownership versus tier rate. Currently, yeah, 1 to yeah. 4%. I think it's okay. I mean, you know, it's not, yes, no, no issue with that. Yeah. Uh, subsidies. So subsidies are going to be down. Uh, they have been talking about, what's the word? Targeted, Targeted su- sub- subsidies. Yeah. So what are some of the, the important changes for subsidies? Yeah. Okay. So uh, before that, you can see the number here is dropping 64 billion by last billion, time. Yeah. yeah. By about 10 billion. Uh, this one, if you want to look at their tax revenue, you can just pause. Yeah. So one is that uh, they, so far, they didn't really tell a very concrete description on diesel fuel yet, but yeah. they did say that, let's say if you are a freight company, maybe you'll be exempted from this, yeah. uh, this thing. Uh, and then um, the reduce of subsidy for 10% for highest electricity consumption. So this one is more for, uh, I think like how big a household yeah. will use a lot of electricity. So they will Bitcoin maybe, minus. Re- yeah, could be also, yeah. So they will start to like, maybe not give them subsidy as compared to the 90% who is using less electricity. Uh, yeah, and but then getting the same amount of subsidy as the T20s. So they say they're going to do this target subsidy based on consumption. I'm not sure they how they're going to do it. And then the last one is for RON95. So RON95, uh, they're also going to be doing a target subsidy, but it's going to be based on Padu database. So this is going to be a, another headache also. They need, need to figure out how are they going to actually target correctly uh, in terms of like individuals. Uh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's the subsidy thing. Uh, it will affect some oil and gas company. Maybe people use less. I, I doubt so, but maybe a little bit. So yeah. I think this is a big one. Uh, companies like what? Tio Seng, CCK, uh, Lei Hong. Lei Hong. Yeah. Uh, they've been affected by this positively, I think. Mm. Uh, it used to be price ceilings for chicken and egg. Kind of sad because I eat a lot of chicken and eggs. Yeah. Um, so that, and then of course, for Paddy, they are going to, uh, you know, increase the floor price. Yeah, to help the farmers a little bit. Lah. Yeah, so anyways. Okay. Excise duty. Okay, yeah, uh, sugary drink, grace yeah, from 40 to 50 cents should be higher, but it's okay, step in the right direction. Yeah, slowly but surely. Lah. And yeah. then the next, uh, then they did say that uh, once they collect this excise duty from these sugary drinks, they're going to channel it back to treating diabetes, the you know, your dialysis center and everything. And then this chewy tobacco, I'm not sure about this, but they say they want to impose excise duty on this one. But well, we know done. historically <laughs> that's not going to work because it's going to be contraband. Mm. There's going to be black market. Yeah. So yeah, it's probably yeah. not going to gonna work. Yes. Okay, so this one is more on the development expenditure. I think last time they, we are spending about like 97 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Then it has dropped down to 90 billion. But also you need to take account because last year there is like this one MDB bond that they need to Yeah, expand. which they paid down already. Yeah, correct. So right now it doesn't feel like it's reducing. Yeah, it's like more or less maybe the same. Now. Maybe slightly increased a little bit. Yeah, so uh, that is about it. Uh, yeah, and just now you mentioned that um, the target thing on this fiscal deficit is going to be about 3.5% in 2024. It's a very good target, I would say. Uh, not sure whether it's achievable. I hope it's achievable. But it's on the right direction. Uh, that we At least we're not really bleeding that a lot as compared to previously. Yeah, I mean, our GDP, so this is all on the cost side, expenses side mm. of things, right? Yeah. I think the key thing is that they need to put in policies that will increase the GDP of the country. Yeah. Then that way, like rather than control so much on the cost, because let's be honest, if you really, if this was a private company, the solution is to start firing people. Yeah. Right, which is 25, more than 25%, 30% of the entire budget expenditure. Uh, but we all know no politicians will ever do that because mm. a lot of the voter base comes from there. So the only way out is this is to outgrow the expenses. Yeah. We have to grow. If we don't grow, 
that we are not going to be able to hit this target. Yeah, and to grow, they have to create more high value jobs, uh, which actually they're going to be doing for the manufacturing sector side, like the E&E yep. industry. Okay, so this is the interesting part. Cause we leave it all the way until the end so that, uh, you know, hopefully yeah. you watch all the way until the end. Yes. So the first one is construction. Uh, LRT is going to be resume. Company that will benefit a big chunk would be MRCB. Yeah. B. yeah, but this one is like a last time kind of news. So it's kind of like very neutral already. Yeah. It's just a, when is it going to revive that symphony? And then uh, another thing is just your Penang and Sarawak Sabah getting more of this development. But so far, this construction industry is very pretty neutral. It's like, it's already, it's already uh, yeah, in the announced past. already in the yeah. past. Yeah. Property is already neutral. Uh, I like the MM2H relaxation. A lot of people yeah. are saying that it should be half. Right now, there's a rule that you must earn 40,000 ringgit Mm. per month ah. which is roughly about for a retiree right even by US standards uh, you have to earn about 10,000 US dollars a month right maybe 8 or 9 yep that is twice the or about one and a half times America's GDP so that's not easy even by American standards so I think the reduction of 20,000 that'll be fantastic we'll get a lot of uh, potential uh, when you go on uh, platforms yeah. like Quora, you see a lot of people actually really like Malaysia as a retirement destination mm. or even a working destination, right? Yep. Um, so if they relax this uh, and they work in tandem with MNCs, I think this can be a good uh, thing. So yes. it's good to know that they're trying to relax it. Yes, exactly. And then uh, there's a few more things is that uh, besides your K- Kulim Kada, uh, besides your Penang, right? They're also going to be building a tech High tech industry area in Perak, Northern Perak in Korea. Yeah. Uh, and then another one is just basically your home credit guarantee. This is more of your affordable housing. So they're just going to give like loans to these 40,000 people of borrowing. And then the one that's going to be benefiting is Lagenda, Massing, and Matrix because these three companies are known to actually build affordable housing. B, B, B40 houses. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Oil and gas. Yeah, also very neutral. I mean, it's the same thing again. They are be giving tax incentives. Yeah, that's why this that, that is the name of this budget, right? It's yeah. a neutral budget, or some say a bit negative. Yep. It's really not too much. It's more question marks, right? Yes. Exactly. Than than answers, which yeah. it's not necessarily wrong. Um, I don't assume that the government has all the answers. So anyway, yeah. So you have Pengarang. Yes. There's going to be tax incentives. Yeah. Great. And then the other one is just more on diesel subsidies only. Some will get, some won't get, but the Subsidy that people, the, those the group that will get is your freight operators or your logistic industry. It's, it's, it's a plus for economy. Right? Yes, correct. And then they also have a tax incentive for those who do more ESG friendly stuff. Yeah. Okay, then the other one is utility is positive. Why? It's because they're going to be building this charging station in Malaysia. So these three companies, Tenaga, Gentari, which is by Petronas, and Tesla Malaysia is going to be building 180 charging yeah. stations. Uh, and also it's something to do with your your net engine energy metering. Uh, basically just uh, want to encourage more people to do this solar panel installation. So you can see like your, maybe some of these solar panel distributors who kind of uh, benefit in yeah. this utility. But I just want to add yeah. that it may not be that great to consumers. For example, um, home chargers typically take about, I think a couple hours Two yep. to three hours to charge. Yes. But the ones that you see in the charging stations, and you're starting to see them really actually throughout the road, you know, your roadside pit stops, mm. right? Not pit stops, uh toilet stops and all that. Uh those for the same amount of charging takes like six, seven, eight hours. So mm. Yeah, and especially uh yeah. Malaysia is in a country that everybody's using car, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's gonna good? stay there for six hours and, yeah, and charge? That's the only there's an issue. But we know that there are companies linked to Tanaga that are already starting to see some positive benefits about this net metering or netter yeah. uh, kind of push by the government. And definitely there's going to be a positive direction to this. Mm-hmm. Tourism positive as well. So this will be Genting, Genting Malaysia, OWG. Yeah. Uh, they target uh, tourist, uh, you know, foreign 26 tourists. million, 26.1 million foreign tourists. Fantastic. I love it. Yeah. A lot of it, I think they have to like capture more on the China theory side. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's the issue. I, I think that's the one movie which is, uh, I forgot what's the Chinese, I, but the English one is sick. It's called No More Bats. Yeah. So basically it's a it's a movie of, of Chinese people gonna keep net to Southeast Asia. Then they did a lot of bad stuff over there. Okay. Like. Yeah, then they gonna tank up. Then it was uh, quite a mess. Uh. So that, that movie actually scared a lot of China theories to come to Southeast Asia. 
Oh. Yeah. Especially in, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's in China, it's in Thailand, Thai, Thailand or something. Yeah, like yeah Indo-China region. Right? Usually, yeah. that, is the, that is the story you hear. Yes, exactly. But Malaysia, we uh, we kind of like gonna affect us in, indirectly. Yeah, la, because we like get la. lumped into them. So. Yes, exactly. Okay, so ADB, uh, this is the e-invoicing mandatory. So maybe auto will yeah. uh, benefit from this. Good one. Yes. Uh, Financial, okay. Uh, somewhat also. Uh, actually, I will say this is neutral. But according to Areca Capital, they say this is kind of like positive. Uh, not sure why, but uh, yeah, this is basically the reasoning why they say it's going to be positive. Lah. Okay. Yeah. Consumer also pretty, pretty much neutral. Uh, while for the poultry products, they will benefit a lot. Your CCK, Lei Hong and Teo Singh. But in general, right, I think it's uh, quite a negative. For example, like your SST 8%, even though it's excluding FMB, right? But somehow it indirectly will. If, if you ask me, increase. the government should have done price ceilings or subsidies for uh, poultry and egg mm. and increase. In fact, I would put a tax on sugar. That will that will help people a lot more because yep. then they will start buying more chickens. and. Uh, but of course, they would have to discuss with all the big players. Yeah. And then ask them, what is the current profit situation like? Mm. So you adjust based on that. Like something like you you let the price of eggs and chicken float the market, but then they are only allowed to charge below 80% of the market value, let's say. So it's a one ring, let, let's say like just for simplicity sake, says 10 ringgit for one chicken. Um, they cannot charge more than eight ringgit. Mm. Or seven so they'll say can you make a profit at eight ringgit or seven ringgit answers yes okay then you cannot charge more than that mm. that's how i would do it yep yep every year review review tip tip okay. uh tobacco wow okay yeah, uh, slightly positive the in stocks yeah because they are going to clamp down a lot of these illicit cigarettes and liquor products so yeah I don't, and don't, yeah good yeah. luck coming down man i yeah. mean if people can smoke cigarettes in prisons and, and and you know do you know that in prison cigarette is a currency? Yeah, yeah, yeah bad cigarettes, yeah. So <laughs> if prisons can get it, uh, I mean, people outside is just nothing, right? Yes. So uh, auto okay. tax relief, okay, rebates for electric vehicle, really yeah, not much, easy, yeah. no big changes. Healthcare neutral. Um, yeah, it's more on the MOH side, lah. That yeah. they want to replace it, equipment. It, it, the company needs to be linked to MOH, right? Mm. If they supply stuff to MOH, they will definitely uh, benefit a little bit. So LKL and uh, uh, U-Medic some, U-Medic, somewhat. Yeah. Right? Plantation. Yeah, actually also really not that much. Again, not much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the tech one is the final one that it's going to be posit- uh, going to be benefiting quite a little bit because they want to emphasize on building more careers yes. re- uh, relating to this E&E sector. So, and then they also going to be giving the same thing, your investment tax allowance or 70 to 800%. And also they got this academic uh, in industry program so you can actually get like foreign students who wants to study right or actually share their knowledge mm-hmm. in overseas to Malaysia right they actually can attend to this uh, program which would definitely benefit a lot to our education sector in terms of this e and yeah. uh, industry yeah so it's a very big positive for tech yeah I think that's about it and yeah guys uh, you know I think if you watch it now you know that we run this thing called Fire Pro. it's mm-hmm. a research program to help you speed up to find uh, potential investments and help you with your decision making very useful for people who are quite busy they don't have the time to go analyze stocks so these 15 minute or less than 15 minute read reports very useful for you go check it out links is in the comment and description if you want to get a taste of what it feels and look like you know test out our free sample also in the comments and description guys that will be it for the video Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next video. Peace.